Danea Jackson was everything to Derek that Kevin Samuels preached to us to be in order to get a man. And yet she still ended up with a fuckboy during black women's I'm not one of your little friends. I'm about to really give you something to cry about black mama month. It is Thursday morning, 1024, child. I'm charging my car before I go to work. It's another one of those days where I'm going to go to Dish Nation and then go to Wallet Out. So I figured I would do this video from my charging station. Side note, well, first of all, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. It's your sister. Um, side note, these charging stations low-key be good spots to meet niggas okay i just met me a nigga i didn't get his number he kind of like burner boy a little bit like he was giving diet burner boy he was kind of cute but you know he was asking me what my nationality was i was like nah, i'm haitian <laughs> i'm black but like not regular black <laughs> uh, and he was telling me about like a haitian festival or something like that and i was like uh he was like, something about Haitian Day. I was like, no, Haitian Flag Day was last week, baby. But he was like, oh, there's like another carnival thing happen happening this weekend, which I'm aware of, but I'm not going to be able to participate because I'm working. But anyway, just want to let y'all know, the Tesla charging stations, it be niggas there. So if you have a Tesla, come to the charging station queue, especially the one at, that's at Atlantic. I need to come down here like on a like a Thursday night or a Friday night. See, I feel like it's gonna be more niggas. So I'm gonna test out that theory next week. Next time I have to charge my car, I'm gonna do it in the evening. But anyway, y'all, shout out to y'all for coming back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you're liking, sharing, subscribing. Also, I know y'all probably tired of me saying this, but please, if you have not heard my song Coupe, please, please, please stream it, stream it, stream it, stream it. The video's coming out really, really soon. I'm actually trying to do a premiere with a certain network. So it's coming out really, really soon. So uh, I look forward to bringing you guys the visuals. I look forward to maybe even starting a little dance challenge or whatever. So make sure that you're streaming my song. Okay. I wanted to just come on here and briefly talk to y'all about this Danea Jackson video, right? Uh, the interview that she did with Lateris on uh, Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Shout out to Lateris. Very, very cool guy. You know, I don't really talk about this type of stuff anymore on here. I really want to stick mostly to doing show reviews. But as I was watching this interview, I just felt so triggered so many damn times, right? And then I went online and I saw on one of the blogs that this guy reposts Wiz. I think it's the guy who created the repost app, right? There was a clip from the interview where Danea talks about knowing the bodies of the women that Derek was cheating on her more than she knew her own body, like knowing them better than she knew her own body. And, you know... The repost whiz guy was in the comment section. Oh, but y'all hated Kevin Samuels. And I just was puzzled by that because you guys really like, my God, y'all are still sucking this man's dick from the afterlife. It's really crazy. The man is dead and gone. Like he's dead and gone, dead and gone. Like Justin Timberlake. Okay, he dead and gone. Um, but y'all are still sucking like his afterlife dick and I really need you guys to stop this because number one first of all I want to start off with the with, with this right Danea Jackson was everything to Derek that Kevin Samuels preached to us to be in order to get a man and yet she still ended up with what she ended up with during black women's i'm not one of your little friends i'm about to really give you something to cry about black mama month she still ended up with a fuck boy let's talk about that i am always puzzled by the parallels that Derek jackson and kevin samuels have that so many of you 
are willingly obtuse to, okay? Number one, here's the thing, right? They both were out here giving women advice on dating, right? But one of them gave very practical advice. Like, say what you want about Derek Jackson. You know, he's obviously <laughs> horrible, and we'll get into that. But the advice that he actually gave was very sound advice. There is this one clip that um, one of my girls, um, Eloho, posted on her channel where he said, he said something to the gist of, hey, like, a lot of you guys, a lot of you women, when you have invested so much into a man and, you know, you see that man cheat on you and he moves on with the girl that, you, that he cheated on you with, a lot of you are thinking, oh my God, like, He's, she's going to get all the things that I invested in him. Like, she's going to get all the things, all the years of hard work that I put into this man. She's going to reap the benefits of that. And he was saying, actually, she's not. Like, time will tell that she's going to get the same man that you experienced. You know, just because it looks like he's seemingly treating her better, he can only do that for so long, right? Another woman takes your man. Don't even trip. First off, everything that you lose ain't a loss, and that applies here. Secondly, I get it, it's like, well, she's taking everything I invested into him. No, she ain't. She about to take everything he was using to stress you out while blaming it on you, she just don't know it yet. And it seems like he's able to give her, you know, all of these different fruits of, of your labor, you know, all of this good treatment, this money, whatever. He was only able to do that because he was giving you the rest of him. He was giving her the best while giving you the rest. Now that she's in your spot, he about to give her the rest. He's about to give her all of that depression he was projecting onto you because he don't need no therapist. That's what she about to get. That's all she's taking from you. She's taking his criticism whenever his money get low. She's about to take on all of the, that neglect, those excuses, how little that he was willing to help you around the house. And But whenever he took out the trash once a week, he wanted to be treated like a cane. That's what she about to get. Advice like this is very sound. It's very realistic. It's there's a lot of truths to it. And so I think that Derek Jackson, what resonated with a lot of us was it was just very practical. It was practical, sound advice. It wasn't like things that were not obtainable versus Kevin Samuels. Kevin Samuels, his whole thing was, listen, like if you're less than a four, you're ugly. And most of the time, you were lesser than a four if you looked like me. You know, if you were a dark-skinned girl, if you weren't a preference, you know, you were lower on the grading scale. Uh, if you were older, if you were above 30, you were at the bottom of the toting pole. Uh, if you were a modern woman, you were at the bottom of the toting pole because that's not what men are not looking for, modern women. Men are not looking for women who have something going for themselves. Um, you are there to be a servant, you know, uh, you have to be a modern woman. You have to be young. You have to be, you know, exotic looking. You cannot be career driven. You know, he basically dumbed down everything that specifically black women were working for in this world. He basically told us like, listen, like you can have all this and we still don't want you. We're still not going to be with you. Right. Um, but when you look at Danaea Jackson, she's the perfect case study of the fact that she was all the things that Kevin Samuels told us to be. And she still ended up with a fuck nigga. When she got with Derek, she was 19. She was not, she was young, very impressionable, okay? She was very cute, very good looking. Okay, she had acne or whatnot, but you know what? Her having uh, the, the whole acne, she dumped herself down even more to be, to be more of what he wanted her to be. She was submissive. She didn't talk back. She didn't, you know, bring up all the things that he would do. He would cheat on her time and time again. She never brought that up. She, she didn't talk back. She wasn't argumentative. She was at Tuskegee with him, right? But she wasn't too career driven. So she was all the things that these men tell you that they want you to be. And that still didn't work. It still didn't work. And I think that that is a testament to 
how unreal Kevin Samuel's whole ideology was. And let's keep it a buck. He was dangerously harmful to black women. Dangerously harmful specifically to black women. He hated black women. He hated us. We're talking about someone. And, and you know another parallel between Kevin Samuels and Derek Jackson? They both weren't living the lives that they were projecting. Kevin Samuels, do a quick Google search and tell me how many preferences, how many of these women who he viewed as preferences were out here trying to be with him. The man died trying to bed a preference. The man caught a whole deathly dick hernia trying to bed his preference. <laughs> the man did not have a healthy relationship with his kids. The man was unmarried. The man died broke. He was not high value. All he did was wear a men's warehouse uh, a suit, put a little flower on the pocket, put some glasses on, and after years of failed content, he finally struck gold when he was mean to black women. And that's when he was able to build a platform for himself because black women love abuse. We have to keep it a buck. A lot of y'all love abuse, which is why a lot of these men have the platforms that they have because you guys really willingly sign up for abuse. I feel like black women are conditioned to accept abuse. We have to have that conversation as well. But all of that is rooted in, in, in misogyny and a lot of you guys will will, will side with misogyny with, a lot of you guys will side with misogyny because you want to get chosen you want to get chosen so bad and that's why men like Kevin Samuels and even men like Derek Jackson have platforms when did Kevin Samuels ever prove that his ideology was actually working for him all he did was slap on a suit, tell you that he was a, 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 a image consultant, and y'all bought it with no receipts. No receipts. We have to have a conversation about the fact that women in our in our uh, uh, um, our women don't really require much. Y'all don't even require receipts. Which is why someone like Derek Jackson was able to be so successful. Again, I never, I never thought that his advice was not sound. But I never bought, like, I was never, like, so committed to Derek Jackson's rhetoric that I monetarily supported him. He would just was saying truths. But y'all will go out of your ways to support these men with these platforms and we really have to get to the bottom of why and it is that dangerous misogynistic abusive pick me mentality that a lot of us have and i say us very loosely because i ain't got it i just don't have it i've never i've never had it i don't subscribe to it i don't see how y'all are so easily manipulated into subscribing to this shit but on that note I want to talk about maybe Danaea's how she was easily able to be manipulated and, 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 and to be able to get wrapped up into this. We're talking about a girl who got with Derek Jackson three weeks after she was violated sexually, right? And she talks about being 19 and being violated at a party downstairs at the basement of the party and nobody hearing her and how she never even really processed that never told a soul until like 15 12, 12 15 years later when she finally got therapy for it and she saw like the the residue of the abuse showing up in her relationship with Derek never even talked to her own husband about being sexually violated until he was mirroring behavior that would trigger what happened to her right and so she goes into this relationship and as a silenced abusee she goes into this relationship and she carries that silence into the relationship this man was never faithful to her she started off being his on and off on and off on and off for years i think they got married nine years after dating each other on and off and even before she got married to this man this girl was taking dick shifts 
in order to still be around him was taking dick shifts was taking turns with other women coming in coming out fucking him at eight o'clock monday night wednesday night friday night in the stairwell seeing all the other girls that were coming in she went into a marriage with a man who never chose her but her silence kept him around that is deep it's kind of a testament to women are black women in our community kind of being conditioned to hey as long as you got a man so here's how you keep the man i'll never forget i think this was uh tamar braxton's mom that said this one time on, on braxton family value she was like listen if you ain't gonna leave that man let him cheat in peace if you're not gonna leave that man let that man cheat in peace and it's my god it's it's a huge testament to how a lot of black women are in our community just let him cheat in peace as long as you got a man right her whole goal was to be married and the fact that she was married was an, a one-upper to to all like he was fucking all y'all but he married me how many black women do we see have that mentality till this day? And then what does this marriage actually do for you? Because then she goes into this marriage with this man, having had a baby for him, having gotten pregnant for him without a commitment. Then, then I guess upon having the baby, because she said she had voiced him several times, several times before, if they have a baby, and ain't no commitment. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to live my life. So that made him marry her, basically. But then you get to this marriage and you're carrying the marriage because he's still cheating on you, right? But then he becomes this Derek Jackson guy who is giving out all this advice that he doesn't even believe. She talks about how they had a fallout because she asked him, yo, do you even believe what you are preaching to these women? You don't even, you don't even live it. But at the same time, she was his lover and his secretary, working every day of the week. My girl was his secretary. She was hiring people to, to, to work up under him. She was, like, she was literally the head of the business side of the company, reaping the benefits. Right? She even I, I love this interview because she was so honest and real about the fact that there were perks of being with this motherfucker now i was a real housewife i was a, i was a real housewife of atlanta without being on the real housewives of atlanta she had all the perks bruh this interview during black women's i'm not one of your little friends during black women's i'm about to give you something to real cry really cry about in a moment black mama month i really really hope y'all are watching this with open ears and y'all are seeing that this girl is not as crazy as she seemed you know with the bottom of salvation and everything and all that but this girl is many of you and many of us have been where she is yo there's this uh you know we all you know so many of us have cracked up i mean and a, lot, and a lot of y'all were mad at you know danaea when she was <laughs> online casting spells on bitches like anybody who's coming to, coming against um my my marriage and coming against my family and da, 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 da. you know i cast this i cast that on you or whatever um i mean she was definitely wilding when she was doing that but I have a bit of a story for y'all. And I think that when I saw this myself, I said, oh, I understand now that this is not as simple as it, as simple as it may seem. So I had never met Derek Jackson in person, but if you look up like my IG lives, is it on my IG live still? Or maybe, I don't know. But um, I, during the pandemic in 2020, I had a IG live with Derek where he was just, was, you know, talking about like relationship stuff. He was giving relationship advice. 
And during that IG live, you know, he briefly mentioned being married, which is why, like, a lot of times when I would see people say, oh, they didn't know that he was married, I was like, I always knew that this man was married. Like, always knew this man was married. Um, so that was always puzzling to me. But anyway, um, during Art Basel this past December, right, I was in Miami and we were at, I was at an event with some of my friends and my mama and in walks this man like I ain't gonna hold y'all time stop this man is fine like Derek Jackson is fine as hell okay so he walks into the event fine as hell and I remember thinking to myself oh my god oh yeah see I I could never I could never be with a man that looks like that that is a headache and when he walked in he walked in with several girls and a guy now again i had never met him in person so he he saw me and and we saw each other we greeted each other and that was it like hey what's up nice to meet you in person blah blah blah. and then we moved on right so mind you some time passes i go back to my table and i'm sitting at my table mind you my mama at my table so i'm at my table whatnot and ooh, ooh, let me see if i can See if I could squeeze on there. Go ahead. See if I could squeeze on there. Yes, God. Um, and so I'm at my table, and one of the girls that walked in with him said to me, Oh, um, you're Haitian, right? I was like, Yeah, yeah, I'm Haitian. And she's like, Oh, you know, I look forward to seeing like all the, the Haitian art that's here. And I was like, Oh, there's Haitian art? I was like, Oh, okay. And I was like, you know, what artists you know, I'm kind of ignorant to the art game. So I was like, oh, is Yago, is it Basquiat? Is it some Basquiat pieces here? Um, but anyway, she said some Haitian artist name or whatever. And I was like, all right, cool. We chit chatted. And then she went on about her business. So I turn around, I'm talking to my mama. The girl comes back to me. And she says, um, I just want to let you know that I'm not one of Derek's little friends. And I said, like, I'm literally, I'm just like, I'm mid-bite. I'm mid-bite, you know, the, app, the hors d'oeuvres are being passed around, like, I done forgot the initial chat I had with this lady. But she made sure she came back to me and she was like, yeah, I just want to let you know that I'm not just one of Derek's just little friends. And I was like, okay. Okay, <laughs> just want to let you know. And she walks off right so i'm just at the table like flabbergasted you know obviously like i tell my mom i tell my friends my friend sasha was there i'm like girl what the fuck was that about i don't even know this mother i hope she knows i don't know this man like i do not i'm kiki palmer i do not know who this man is okay but anyway probably like a less than a week later the same girl was all over tasha k's page and Tasha K was exposing that the girl was in a relationship with Derek. And I remember thinking to myself, girl, that is demonic. This man has a demonic spirit on him. Because why would you come and confront me at this Art Bazel event? <laughs> I don't even know this man. Why would you come confront me? And then it got me to thinking about Danea, how she was online just like, being so confront, uh, confrontive and combative to women and cursing us and using the Bible to curse us and all that, that is a demonic spirit. Like, this man is walking around with a demonic spirit, a spirit that is able to bring out the worst in you for whatever the reason. I, I just, I don't know, I just, it just made me think about that. And it made me think, I thought a lot about that as she was speaking, just as how she said she would study these women. She would study these women. She would study their bodies. And I'm pretty sure she would study their names and their lives. Because even like Lateris had to blurp out the names that she was throwing out because she was throwing out real names. Like she knows all 100 of these women's. She knows their names. She knows where they live. She knows where they hang out at. That is demonic. Like, it is beyond just um, this man being a narcissist and all that. This is a demonic spirit. And I really think that 
just looking at her and her being a woman of God, right? I have no doubt that she has a real relationship with Christ. But this man possesses something demonic and he was able to put that on her. And I feel like a lot of women just in the body of Christ are demonically attached to men that are in the body of Christ. Like... You know, I told that little story about Art Bazell and I'm looking at her story, but I'm looking at even like a lot of women just in the body of Christ, just what Christian women are willing to deal with when it comes to these men of God. Because like Derek Jackson was supposed to be a man of God, not just an anti fuck boy, good guy, but he's supposed to be a man of God. You see, in our community, especially those of us who are within the body of Christ, The rhetoric, the Christian rhetoric that we are forced to inject is so anti-woman and so pro long suffering and bearing with everything as a woman. And it's kind of like that verse in the Bible, right? In Ephesians chapter six, where it says, children, obey your parents so that God will grant you with long life, right? Parents always use that scripture, but they never mention the next part of the scripture where the bible will tell you and parents do not provoke your children you know parents can be very provoking parents can do a lot of things that are fucked up to their kids but christian parents will always use you know parts of the bible that fit their rhetoric to make to 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 garner submission from their kids and it's kind of like the same thing with women in the body of christ you know like uh, the, the Bible tells you to, you know, to submit to your husband, but also the Bible tells you that, uh, that we are his bride. You know what I mean? Like as the body of Christ, that we are the bride of Jesus. And so me being part of the body of Christ and me being your actual bride, you are to treat me as, as, as what you, as what the Bible would say that Jesus would treat me like. You know what I mean? There's so much, there's so many parts of the Bible where it, it shows you, it tells you as a man how to in return also be submissive to your to your uh to your wife and what love is. Love is patient, love is kind, you know, love does not bruise. Like it, it, it's just it, it's crazy how just within Christianity, especially black Christianity, just the rhetoric is just so harmful to us and when I and honestly, it's it's demonic to me how pastors and you know men are able to use the Bible and use Christianity to turn black women into slaves within their marriage, into just insignificant beings as long as you have a ring on your finger you know what i'm saying and it's just funny even when you're watching her interview as she's talking about well you know i got the ring and the marriage was every the 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 wedding was everything like he put the he put will you marry me on a bid for the baby and he called my mom and it was like she really had no standards no real standards and no real requests from this man other than marry me that was her only request. And as a Christian woman, that's the goal is to be married. Even though the marriage does nothing for you. Like time and time again, I don't know, just as a black woman, I'm just looking around. I'm just like, not just with this case, but even like marriages that I've seen in my family and marriages that I've seen with my friends It's just very seldom that I see a marriage really be profitable for a black woman. And in this case with her, I mean, okay, yeah, she was with Derek Jackson, but Derek was with everybody else too. He just wasn't with you. He was giving his most sacred parts to all of these women and he was making the footage of him doing this easily accessible for you to see with no regard for your soul your heart your feelings like it's just heartbreaking it was heartbreaking to watch 
this interview. I know there's going to be a second part that comes out. But honestly, it just really had me thinking a lot about how these men are able, the Kevin Samuels of the world, the Derek Jacksons of the world, the, the LA Swindlers of the world. I will never skip an opportunity to remind y'all to watch my LA Swindler videos because this man is still out here swindling women that he used to pastor and he's still out here using the word of God to swindle people into giving him money. Like the way that these men are able to use God's word to enslave and abuse women within the body of Christ is sickening. What I loved about this interview, she took a lot of accountability because I think accountability is something that as women sometimes we don't like to have when it comes to what we allow these men to do to us or even like men with women that cheat too like she took a lot of accountability this man showed her that he was a cheater from day one he was cheating on her well before they even got married she was in the dick rotation well before they got married and she kind of used she tried to use like being part of the rotation as a means to you know I'm going to beat all these girls out. I'm going to beat this. Like, I'm going to stick this out and he's going to eventually choose me. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like a lot of us don't take accountability for the signs that we ignore in these relationships. Like, when a, when someone shows you who they are, like Oprah says all the time, believe them the first time. If he shows you he's a cheater, believe that. Believe that. And if you choose to go forward, you know keep that in mind this man is a cheater and so you're a willing participant and I feel like when you listen to the interview she takes full accountability of being a willing participant and I can appreciate that anyway y'all I literally took a break in between recording this went to Dish Nation it is now 108 p.m. I've got to make my way to Wild and Out so let's go ahead and do that uh, I'm going to listen to the second part that's coming out today too. So we'll see. Maybe I can continue my review when I get home. We'll see. Let's go ahead and park, child. Yes, child. All right. It is 2:04. I'm like literally right on time for like rehearsal. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm at work. Uh, it is 3.16. Okay, y'all. It is 4.19. Okay. 4.19. So there is uh, a Wild Night episode uh, being filmed right now. I'm not in it. Um, the next episode is going to be filmed probably like around six because like after the first episode we get like a lunch break and stuff so anyway so i started watching the part two episode not part two confirming what i was telling y'all earlier which was i really think that Derek has a demonic spirit on him because when you listen to part two there her and lateris are starting to talk about just a demonic spirit that was within their home that started attacking their children and that she was even seeing her daughter being picked up out of her bed and being thrown on the floor in the middle of the night right now you know I know some of y'all look at me it, it's it's so funny uh, sidebar I have you know all the footage of me from Jamaica right and I have a video of me like the last reel that I have like just walking around carnival shaking my ass you know doing what you do at carnival and y'all if y'all would see the dissertations in my comment section or even if you go on Facebook and you see like people who reposted my video and their comments like telling me how I am so this so that you never gonna find a husband you never like you're supposed to be you're supposed to be a godly woman weren't you just on a podcast crying about you know the fact that you want a good father for your kids and da -da -da. like just women especially women there's some men but it's especially the women just like brow beating me down right and it's like but y'all be doing all that and y'all still end up with these demonic ass fuck niggas like <laughs> so bitch choose you be who you want to be this is the problem like even with Danaea 
and not to beat her down but you know what a lot of y'all hoes problem is y'all be trying to be something that y'all not in order to get these niggas and i'm gonna tell you these niggas the very women that they tell you that they don't want the very women that they tell you they're not that that, that are not their type the very women that they tell you to stay away from they love those type of women them is the women they gonna cheat on you with and them is the women that once they cheat on you and they, 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 they fucking dry up, they fucking suck the life out of you. Those are the women that they move on with. Now, you know, God be with those women as well when they move on with their ass. But my whole point is be you. Be the person that you want to be. A lot of y'all be doing all this shit just to get this ring. I finally got my ring a lang a lang But bitch, you are in prison. You are a slave. <laughs> it's like you are in bondage. <laughs> you are in bondage to a demonic ass nigga like this interview honestly y'all i really i really hope i really hope that the church girlies especially i really hope that the church girlies are paying attention to this interview because this interview is specifically for y'all like and i'm a church girly too you guys know i grew up in church and i left the church for a minute i went back i even started working at a mega church and let me tell you something the ugliest things i've seen done to people were at church like there are so many demonic people that are in church but women especially men too but women especially fall victim of these niggas all the time you know why because that pick me spirit is deep in the church it is deep in the church when literally if you guys read the bible like god was out here freeing the hoes like jesus was out here hanging out with the hoes hanging out with the the the, the people that were seen as unholy unruly like those were the people that really found favor in jesus you know why because their hearts were pure they weren't perfect but they had pure hearts they weren't out here trying to be something that they weren't and when they had a real encounter with jesus they were really able to change their ways it wasn't people judging them that helped them change their ways it was them having a real encounter with god see y'all christians y'all don't usher people into real encounters with god y'all are just full of judgment and then the whole time y'all be trapped in so much darkness Y'all in y'all are like y'all be trapped in demonic spirits, trapped by demonic spirits. That's why I don't be paying attention to y'all puss ass hoes. Keep that shit away from me. Keep that old testament way of thinking the fuck away from me. Let me live my motherfucking life. I'm not trying to be out here like y'all sobbing on Al Gore's internet about how a nigga had you out here having your daughter being picked up and thrown on the floor by satan throughout all the wee hours of the night no ma'am no ma'am no 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 okay also i love that danaea is verifying what i said about him publicly saying that he was married he said it several times i know i've i've heard him talk about him being married before he said it on my platform before um and she said like it's it's in his books like his highest selling book like he breaks down you know being married to her right and then she broke down how um their first tour like she was there at every tour stop now she said there were a couple there were a couple instances where she had to announce hey like i'm his wife you know because there were instances where she felt women were being inappropriate but he was being inappropriate too like if they were being inappropriate he wouldn't let it stop so like boundaries were, were clearly not set but also you know what this made me think of we have to start thinking about we have to start discussing the fact that a lot of y'all knew this man was married and you you guys still sought him out so it's like yeah Derek is the bad guy but a lot of you hoes are the bad guy too <laughs> a lot of you bitches love married niggas see like I'm I, I'm allergic to married people I'm allergic to people who are in relationships like I can't do that I just cannot but a lot of y'all love the thrill. You loved the 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 uh, you loved the ability of saying, "Oh yeah, I'm with Derek Jackson." Even like th those of y'all who slept with this man, you knew this man was married. You knew, you knew he was married, and you still slept with him. And it's like, okay, as women, like you don't have loyalty to Danea, you don't have loyalty to what he has going on. But y'all are part of the problem. 
I really want people to have more of a conversation about that where it's like y'all knew he was married y'all slept with him then y'all wanted to expose him and then like what did you get out of that what what did what what did anybody get out of this <laughs> what what exactly like that I feel like needs to be a discussion as well like you guys really added to this lady's pain and again it's like you're not responsible you don't have loyalty to her but the black women's brunches ain't working see that's why i don't be going to these black women brunches no more because y'all bitches will sleep with a married man asap like and y'all will say oh my god it's married men it's the, it be the married men's yeah and y'all be fucking them y'all be fucking them because who they, who do they be fucking who are they fucking y'all y'all be fucking these married niggas and y'all be knowing that they are married you know, like, we need to have a conversation about that. The black women brunches ain't working. You bitches do not believe in black girl magic. That Y'all do not believe in black girl magic. And y'all, not only did you guys know that he was married, you knew that she had children. During black women's, I'm not one of your little friends. During black women's, I'm about to really give you something to cry about black mama month. Y'all knew that this girl was a mother. And y'all still fucked her husband. There needs to be a conversation about that. But I don't know. Maybe I'm not the one to have it. You know, I ain't never been married. I ain't never slept with no married ass nigga. So I cannot relate. But. Oh, wait a minute. No, I did sleep with a married nigga before. But he lied to me. He told me that they were not together. Wait, no. I didn't know he was married. Okay, so this is what happened with me. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on now. Before you start judging. I see you judging. I was seeing this guy. And everything was great you know okay things are moving along i was in college at the time you know i go and i start telling my friends about him and not one of my friends was like wait a minute this is my cousin's husband girl what not the nigga who was sucking my toes on i-95 south last night so i go to him and he's like oh well we like we married but not married married what <laughs> Remind me to tell y'all that story, but yeah, so technically I did sleep with a married nigga, but I did not know he was married. And once I found out he was married, I did not sleep with him anymore. But anyway, back to, um, let's not focus on my dirt child. Back to Danae and them. You know what another thought was for me too, is that damn, you know, Derek used to do a lot of his videos in the car, like in his car, right? So was he parked outside one of y'all hoes' house when he was doing them videos? funny but like literally was giving us sound advice while parked at one of his side bitches house that's crazy um another part of the interview that really hit home for me was the helmet of salvation part where she talks about the fact that you know at the time that they did that video they were fresh off of it Derek's uncle being uh, uh dying they had just found out she was pregnant with their third child he had confessed to her about all those women. So all the women that Tasha K exposed, she was already familiar with all of them. And now she had to go and be on camera and address it. <laughs> and the best thing she had was that Helmet of Salvation scripture. And she talks about the fact that it was knowing that scripture that saved her from eliminating herself from this world, right? And it just really makes you think. Not gonna lie, that, that moment was hilarious. It just was hilarious. The bonnet, the, the verse, the way he was talking so eagerly to the camera, the way she was obviously being forced to talk to us. I mean, the exterior was so funny, right? But you never really think of, like a lot of us people don't really think of, stop and think of, damn, what is happening to this person on the inside? She was going through so much on the inside. How many times have any of us been in a relationship where we, ha we were kind of forced to back up our partner knowing that our partner was single-handedly tearing us apart? Like when you think about it, it's really relatable. Most of us have had a helmet of salvation moment. Most of us can pinpoint a helmet of salvation moment where you sitting there backing up your nigga or backing up your, your you know, your girl, knowing dead, like doing, knowing dead ass that she is dead ass wrong or he is dead ass wrong. 
but you're saving face. A lot of us have been there. For many different reasons, but a lot of us have been there. And it's a terrible place to be. It's a terrible place to be when you have way more loyalty to someone who is loyal to tearing you apart rather than that person having loyalty to you. That's an ugly place to be. Okay, it is 546. Changing into this episode's outfit. So cute. Honestly, I'm just keeping it simple. We're in this shirt with some black tights and chest It is 6.50. What they do? Season 21. 21 and up. Period. And let's get it. Let's go. Jesse Wu on the vlog. Miami's finest. My look, don't pop. Don't pop. Y'all Y'all, it is what? 851. I am down to the Tesla charging station down at Atlanta. And oh my god, like it is awful. I've never seen it this lit in here. Ah oh, damn. One just opened up. Fuck. Damn. It's so lit in here. Um I got off of work 40 minutes ago. Oh Lord. Ciao. So now I'm trying to charge my car but um you know while i wait for a charger to open up let me go ahead and continue this interview right so i was at the 47 minute mark and this is when she wait is that a charging station i don't think that was a charging station but danea says that wait i what part was it? Okay, so we're talk so her and Lateris were talking about the Mother's Day post. So, you know, people really drag the hell out of uh Derek Jackson for his Mother's Day post, as they should have, because it literally was a post where he just basically told her, Thank you so much for suffering. <laughs> thank you for so thank you so much for suffering. Thank you so much for putting up with my shit. Thank you so much for suffering and showing up. For me and the kids at times when you couldn't even show up for yourself. Like, it just was a whack-ass Mother's Day post. And it just was... There was nothing honoring about it. There was nothing, you know, that was loving about it. And then come to find out, she actually disclosed that she didn't even know about his Mother's Day post until Monday evening. Because, to her knowledge, Derek had blocked her on all social media platforms. And when she saw it it was a friend of hers who brought it up to her and finally when she saw it she felt bad for not liking it but then also she said her own husband who she's been with for like 20 years now didn't even spell her name right like <laughs> this is fucking crazy and then they go on to talk about the bonnet of salvation video again and um but I think Lateris, was he, were they talk, did they talk about the Bonnet Salvation video again? I think they did. Uh, and, oh, and she was saying how people were making, they were talking about how people were making fun of the Bonnet of Salvation, uh, the, 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 the Helmet of Salvation, but that it, that, it, that it is an actual scripture. And so then Lateris was like, so let's talk about how you use scripture to curse everybody, right? Y'all, this girl really stayed, t she stayed 10 toes down on, it's not my fault that, y'all don't know the word of god i was using the word of god correctly and she was you know she quoted the, the most of the passage right and she was like god gave us the words to speak when people are cursing you right but as she was saying that i was like girl that's not it because yes the word of god is definitely there mm -hmm. to you know teach us to teach us how to pray and to teach us how to go to war for ourselves but you didn't use that in the right context Cause see, come to find out, she posted when she posted the whole I curse who curses me, may you be fatherless, may the kids, may your kids be fatherless, may your wives turn into widows, and may your kids forever be vagabonds. She posted that after <laughs> Derek had sent her a text message asking her for a divorce. 
So Derek text messaged her asking her for a divorce and her response to that was to curse everybody. That's not it, <laughs> girl. That ain't it. And to be honest, as I was watching that portion of the interview, I'm like, okay, see, my sister needs to be, she needs, she needs a walk along with God. She, 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 she actually needs to be freed. Like, girl, this is not how you use the word of God. You don't use the word of God to curse everybody who ain't got nothing to do with what your man, what your husband is doing. Your husband texting you to divorce you. That's who you need to cuss. You need to be cussing your husband, not the general public. The general public has nothing to do with what your husband has put you through for over 20 years. That is something that you need to be cussing your husband out at. You need to be cussing the very, his edges. You need to be cussing that dick that he using to put up in all them women's. You need to be cussing them videos as he was, that he was fucking portraying something that he was not. Like, you're not cursing the right people. And the fact that she stood ten toes down on that, I was like, yeah, girl, see, I was with you mm, up, again, up, up until that. And now I'm seeing a woman who's using Christianity in a very toxic way. And I'm sorry, but there's one side of me who feels empathy for what she's been through. But also, this is just, uh, you're showing up like all of these other judgy-ass Christians who, do, who have a lot of misplaced anger. Like, your anger should not be with the general public. I mean, I could see you cussing out these bitches that's been, that's been sleeping with Derek, knowing that you were, you were his wife. But the general public has nothing to do with this. So you cussing out random folks, that's not Christianity. That's not the that's not per the word of God. And, you know, last time I checked, Jesus didn't use his mouth to curse anybody. And y'all, the more I just dissect this interview, bless her heart. And I really hope like she's healing and I hope that she gets better. But Denea comes across as an extremist. Like she's an extremist. The way her, her being in this relationship with him from start to finish, her ways of be, her tactics were extreme. Now her Christianity comes across very extreme, very toxic. So yeah, I, I don't see this ending well for her if she doesn't dissect and fix her extremist ways. Jesus never used his mouth to curse anybody. He used his mouth to free folks. That was his ministry. And so now she's talking about, oh, I'm the head of ministry. Yeah, being the head of ministry, you're there to free people. That's what Christianity is all about. Not cussing motherfuckers out. Like, that's why Jesus came from heaven down to earth was to die for our sins and to free us. So as a Christian, we're supposed to be walking around here freeing people from bondage, not cursing them into bondage. So yeah, girl, no, nah, that ain't it. Okay, y'all. So another part of the video that really struck me was when she talked about the fact that her daughter is Derek's preference. And that shit to me... There's part of me that was like, girl, girl, I don't know about sharing this now, but I think things like this need to be shared more often because we don't talk about a lot of the things that make mothers and daughters go at it. And sometimes it be that jealousy. Like, I don't think that's a conversation that we have a lot in our community is jealousy between mothers and daughters and a lot of times it's from the mother to the to the daughter for whatever the reason right but for her when she shared that her daughter is dark-skinned and she's the tone that she knows her husband prefers and before you you come into my comments Danea is not dark-skinned I'm dark-skinned I'm a chocolate girl Danea is not a chocolate girl Danea is like a brown skin girl she's not a dark skin girl there's dark skin there's brown there's light skin there's mixed there's ambiguous like you know there there is a i hate when people try to put certain shades in the dark box and it's not it like she's definitely a brown girl and obviously if she's talking about her daughter being chocolate and dark skin her, her daughter is obviously like 
around my skin tone. And um, when she spoke on that, I was like, this lady was going through it. And you know what's crazy, y'all? I don't know why this came to mind for me, but watching this video and hearing this girl's side of things and how things have gone on in her marriage. And I don't know why, but do y'all remember when Derek Jackson went at it with Pastor John Gray? When John Gray kept getting caught in the cheating scandal? See, I don't see it for Pastor John Gray either. That motherfucker right there would cheat on his wife for a two-piece with extra honey for the biscuit. Like, that motherfucker right... <laughs> baby, you give that motherfucker a slab of ribs and a coleslaw on the side, he cheating. <laughs> that motherfucker cheating. I don't give a fuck. I can, I've i never seen it for that man. I have never seen it for that man and, 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 and the shit that he's put his wife through. But I remember when he was going at John Gray and telling John Gray how you need to be a faithful, you need to be faithful to your wife and you, you a man of God and... And this is what you was doing down to your house, Derek? Like, being a whole terrorist to your wife? Like, oh my God, it breaks my heart. Because honestly, I did not see it being this bad. Even when, like, Tasha K revealed, like, all the girls that he was cheating with. It's a part of me that's like, damn, Derek. Uh. But damn, I didn't see it being this fucking bad. Like, this is bad. This is horrible. Like, y'all. And you know what the sad part is? Denea is a lot of y'all. And I'm going to say y'all because I ain't never been married. I've never been in this type of situation before. But Denea is a lot of y'all. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. A lot of y'all are going to start following Denea. And now she going to be y'all little savior. And I'm going to tell you right now. Sis is still very unhealed. And y'all are going to have a vicious, unhealed cycle going. But at the end of the day, you know, one thing, one thing I know for sure. Y'all love. Y'all love following murky paths. <laughs> That's the, the internet is all about that. Y'all love murky waters. So I, I, I see exactly where this is going. She's going to become y'all hope. And I'm telling you right now, that girl still has a whole lot of healing to do and, and 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 it's not even like i'm not saying that from a place of girl that like like beating down on her but nah this girl is not in a good place this girl is not a, this is this is a lot you know what's another thing that caught me really caught me during this interview <laughs> Uh, earlier in the interview, I think this is like during the first part, part one, Danea was saying how there have been several times throughout the relationship where she asked him like to make like a public declaration of her. Like she needed people to know, like, you know, even though I said I've, I've always known that he was married and she said herself too that he's talked about being married before, but he had never like made a public de de declaration to her. He had never like showed her off to the world. And so imagine you've been asking this motherfucker to do that for years. And the first time this motherfucker want to make a public decoration, a public decoration of you, is when you got your helmet of salvation on. When you got your bonnet of salvation on. When it's time for you to come in like Olivia Pope and handle some shit. The first time he prances you around the world is when he wants to use you to save him and to save his career. Derek, you'll pay for your sins. Now, I ain't gonna hold you like, I... I'm gonna have to unfollow this nigga. This is some shit. <laughs> this is some shit. But at the same time, too, again, the way her accountability is very good you know, she takes accountability for a lot of things. But girl, you let this man, you, you had no boundaries. And she says this, you had no boundaries. You gave this man no boundaries. You, you didn't let him show you 
You didn't force his hand any time. You just kept letting him slide a lot because you wanted to, to be married. And I can empathize with that. Can I? I, I don't know. See, maybe this is why I ain't got no, but like, I just, I, like, I, baby, you get on my nerves like a couple times. I, I can't. I'm, I'm gone. I, I, I don't know. And I know marriage is supposed to be work, but is like, this ain't work. This is fucking slavery. This is fucking slavery, girl. This was not a marriage. This was, girl, this was bondage. This was some motherfucking bondage. My God. That's a thing. Like that's one thing I can say about like living in Atlanta. These I was just saying this at work earlier. Women here in Atlanta, they compete for these men. They chase these men. Watching this interview, I'm like, yo, Danae Jackson is all y'all. Like the way y'all will compete and fight to the death. It's like Game of Thrones for y'all hoes when it comes to these niggas. I'm sorry. Well, that's why God, God told her leave. Yo, yo, like I'm sorry. Like I'm not doing that. Like I'm sorry. I am not a road runner. I am not running after no nigga. I'm sorry. Like my 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 Haitian ancestors freed me from slavery. I do not do slavery. I am very allergic to slavery. I'm sorry. No, no. So it's like. When I say the Nea Jackson is a lot of y'all, I mean that because I, I literally cannot relate. Like, I, I cannot relate to this. And I, I have empathy. But maybe that's why, like, I'm by myself. Because I'm not going to be chasing no nigga. I'm not proving to you to please choose me. Choose me. Pick me. Pick me. Pick me. I'm not doing that. comparing myself to the next one. No, 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 no. I'm not doing that. I'm going to be honest with you and say, has there been times when, like, I was dating someone and I felt like something was going on with someone and I peeped stuff on Instagram and I went to the girl's profile. Yes. But I'm not like, yeah, but I'm not going to be studying her body and studying. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. But at the same time, it's a lot of women who do do that. And I can, I can empathize with that because like of insecurities but I'm not about to be letting nobody drive me insane. Like, like that is insanity. You will never be able to outcompete. Because you know what the thing is with niggas? Niggas don't even have a preference for real. Niggas will that's put. That's why when she said her child. Yo. Like, oh, that's not his only preference. I'm that's like, not. Oh. That's not. Bro, I told you how I saw this nigga down to the Art Bazell. That That's nigga was down saying. to the Art Bazell and that bitch who... Remember I told you how the girl the girl confronted me? Yeah. Bruh. The, I, that's not even his preference. The girl looks like a fucking... The, the, girl herse, the girl herself looked like a cute psychopath. So it didn't, it didn't make no fucking... She looked like a fucking crack... She looked like a crackhead. You know, my daddy was a crackhead. I know a crackhead when I see one. She looked like a fucking crackhead. So I just was like, this shit don't make no motherfucking sense. Men don't have a preference for real. These niggas, these niggas will put their penis in any hole. You put a hole in the wall, that nigga gonna fuck that wall. He's ready to go. He ready to go. Like men don't have a pre so when you out here trying to out out preference his out preference and you competing and ooh let me study her. She got a tattoo here. Let me put a tattoo here. Oh, th this how she sucked his dick. Let me suck his dick like this. girl. That man do not care. What? You're never going to out suck a man's dick. Whose dick is being sucked by more than a hundred women? This man got his dick sucked by more than a hundred women. You are never going to out suck a hundred women sucking your nigga dick. I'm sorry, that's a whole lot of dick sucking. All I thought was when she was saying that, I was like disease, 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 disease. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. She didn't even, she didn't, she even talk about that. But I'm pretty yeah, sure, I'm pretty sure, like between. The psychiatrist, the therapist, you got to go down to the doctor. You're pregnant. You, like this man is putting your body in danger and your your kids in your kids' bodies in danger. Yeah, she was very. She still was protecting him because even when she was saying, "Oh, we're married. I didn't even know about this." She was still protecting him. No. Something was happening. There was, there was a lot more. No. And then let me tell you, you have to remember when I was nineteen, I was in college. I was dating a single Marcel. 
I remember sitting outside of the fucking, uh, going crazy in college for this nigga cheating and shit. If I would have probably stayed with him, I probably would have gone that crazy. Girl, you would have been, you would have been Denea. Yeah, if I've gotten older, as I got older, I'm like, oh, fuck no, I would never do this shit. Hell no, hell no. That was my first, that was like, you know, oh my God, your first love, all this shit. We're in college together, we're living together. So yeah, I can see how at 19, you're like, this is my forever. And she's never had anything outside of that. So it just, that's all she knew. So she's still living off of that, yeah. that energy that she got from a child. Yeah. To a whole teenager falling in love. So she's still living off of that. And I'm like, nah, now I know better. I'm not going to be sitting here. I don't want to go through nobody's phone. I don't want to have to. Nah. Bro, Shayna. Bro, I've never gone through a man's phone. I, I put that on my life. I have never gone through a man's phone. I have never tried to hack a man's IG. I've never done any of that. If I sus- like literally when I think back to her at 19, I was with that little Dominican boy that I was with for two and a half years. I and remember. and literally what made me break up with that man, what made me break up with Carlos Manuel was that that mother Carlos, Carlos from Alapata. What made me break up with Carlos was that nigga started showing up the dates musty. And I said, this is not my man. My man is not a musty ass man. I said, what the A? Let me tell you something about this Dominican. That Dominican was everything but musty. I said, when he started showing up the dates musty, I said, nah. This motherfucker don't, right. this motherfucker ain't wearing cologne for me, but he wearing cologne for somebody else. Because one thing about Carlos, he loved cologne. So I was like, nah. You showing up, you showing up musty to me, but somebody else is getting a whiff of that new Baccarat. Okay. (laughs) I wasn't, I was not stupid. And literally I broke up with him months later, less than a year. This man moved in with another woman. Mm. I was with this man for two and a half years. This man moved in with with another woman. All I needed was being the, the the suspicion and my intuition that's it i'm not gonna be sitting here going through all this shit and trying to figure out and calling out this person and throwing hexes and on bitches and do, girl doing voodoo on bitches and and, and putting on the hell the, the helmet of salvation and all that let, let, hey let me tell you something i'm not doing all that i'm not doing all that one thing i will have is peace I'm not doing all that for these I niggas. I literally will pay for peace. When, 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 uh, Lateris was praying for her at the end and he was like, you know, now you're, you're going to go from being in the background to the forefront. And I was like, yo, uh-huh. th- I was like, this is not the solution. But at the same time, because I know how the internet internets, these women are now going to look at her as, as their savior. Like now, exactly now, what now I said. bro, now she's going to be their savior now she's gonna be their inspiration. Now she gonna have the courses. So just like you said, it ain't nothing for us to to look back at this and be like, hold up, this really might be a scheme that Todd set up the whole time because Tasha K blew up his shit. So now she can build her shit. Who's to say that they ain't set this entire shit up? This this entire play. The same way they set up that whole that that whole video that they did. They have kids to raise. They have three small kids to raise. If she gets a divorce from this man, she still has to build her own. Like, there's no money there for real right now. Literally. You know, there might be a little something, something. But clearly in the statement, she said that she doesn't have access to any of his funds, access to any of the money. Girl, it was was when when she had said... Derek told her they was having a financial crisis. Meanwhile, meanwhile, it's a Lambo parked outside. It's a man. It's a mansion, bitch. It's a it's a condo, bitch. Girl, what and the fuck is going? on? What you mean financial crisis? What the fuck you talking about? And then, mind you, remember what she said in the beginning? She was the one that handled everything on the back. Yep, yep, yep. That hired the staffing. That yep, did everything. Yep. So how is it that you don't know who you're hiring when you're the ones that hired them, how much they're getting paid, how much is going in and out? Oh my you're God, that's so people. true. But at the same time, maybe she was, oh my God, that's so true. I didn't think about that. Because the way she made it seem was like, yeah, she hired or whatever and she coordinated, but the way she made it seem was she didn't have access to the finances. But now that you're saying this, this makes sense because if you're if you're hiring... I'm what I'm booking these niggas. Right. I don't know what the I don't know how much coming in, coming out. Like, how would I Yeah, you, know? you have to know I that. 
I have to know that. Anyway, y'all, it is 9.42 p.m. I'm almost done charging my car. Um, Yeah, this Danae Jackson interview is really good. Uh, Both parts are really, really good, really telling. Please watch it. I think, honestly, I think that this is a good interview for anyone to watch. Whether you're in a relationship, whether you're not, whether you're single, whether you're married. Because there are a lot of signs and there is a lot of accountability there is a like there's just a lot of vulnerability in here and honesty transparency i really give it up to her for doing this um but also man it's like i feel bad for her but a part of me is like sis you sis the signs were there the flags were there you thought this was six flags girl Mm -mm. This is not this is not an amusement park, sister. The flags were there. Yeah, this is wow. I have so many thoughts, but y'all, I'm so tired. Y'all drop down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.